elevation of the right costal damn it. <laughs> go ahead we're going to look at um, again clinically speaking many of the middle and lower ribs tend to be more prone to what they call elevation restrictions and a lot has to do with the erector spinae group particularly the longissimus thoracics and the iliocostalis thoracics and their pull and their influence of the spine as they anchor basically for the most part the pelvis the sacrum lumbar spine to either the TVPs or out onto the ribs. So one of the things we're going to look at over here is we're going to look at both joint play and end play. Typical test question would be, we want you to assess elevation of the seventh costal on the patient's right. So your patient's position, obviously they're going to be seated, their legs are going to be in front of them, these are about 90 degrees sitting in neutral posture. We first have to locate our segmental contact point, and so using Dr. Browning's method, we're going to, go, we're going to bisect the inferior angles of the scapula, that's going to get us, in this case, a spinous process of T7. From here, uh, what our segmental contact point is going to be is the inferior margin of the rib, of, of the angle of the rib, the inferior margin of the angle of the rib. So once I find the spinous process, how do you find the rib? Well, since I'm in the middle thoracic spine, my formula is two inner spinous spaces up, and then over about an inch, that's going to find me the transverse process. And then once I find the transverse process, I'm going to continue palpating laterally about another inch, and that's going to put you, for the most part, over that costal. We want to be on the inferior aspect of that costal, the inferior margin of it. Uh, when working on a patient, another method that's just as easy is come to the lateral border of the paraspinal muscles, and that will usually put you right over where you want to be. Okay. Once I have it here, if I want to feel joint play, what I can do is I can take my finger and I can palpate the inner space below, so otherwise it would be in the intercostal space. Now with regards to you know, what motions create elevation, well there are four. I can inspire, as I inspire it increases or separates, it elevates the rib angles relative to one another. So just having somebody breathe in and breathe out, you should feel the costal margins open and they should also close as they expire. Another way I can increase the rib angles over here is to have the patient flex, because when patients flex, it increases the intercostal spaces. With regards to rotation and lateral bending, I can increase this costal margin by having them laterally bend, contralaterally. In this case, if I'm assessing the right side, I'll have them laterally bend to the left. And also with rotation, it's contralateral. I can have them rotate to the left, and that's going to increase these costal margins, these spaces. So with regards to palpation, I'm going to combine all three of those maneuvers, flexion, contralateral lateral bending, contralateral rotation. And to assess joint play, I keep the patient neutral, I palpate that intercostal space. It's best to have your patients fold their arms in front of them and then reach around and grab that ipsilateral shoulder. To combine these movements, it's not a lot of movement, but what you'll feel is if you combine flexion, lateral bending, and rotation away, you'll feel that intercostal space open or widen. That would be joint play, and I would expect to see an elevation of this rib relative to the rib above, uh, below. In other words, this intercostal space opens as I do this and closes as I return back to normal. That would be normal. To assess end play, I first want to bring this costa transverse and vertebral joint to pretension. Well, how will you know it's a pretension? Well, from the joint play, if you put your finger in this intercostal space, as you flex, contralaterally, laterally bend and rotate, you're going to feel that rib angle begin to open up slightly. And then you're going to come to a point where it doesn't open up anymore. Well, you've obviously brought that rib to pretension. So you'll realize it's not all that much. Basically, if I was to take this position here, you could see it on me. Now, when I fold my arms, you can actually see that the entire rib cage is open right about here. So in essence, if you take this shoulder and try to pull it slightly down and towards the midline, it'll open up those rib angles. Once in that position, my segmental contact point with my thumb is going to be under that costal margin. The plane of the costal transverse joint is virtually in the coronal plane. It's just about 20 degrees off the coronal. So predominantly, your line of drive for um, elevation is going to be predominantly I to S. But you will have to use a little P to A just enough to compress the overlying tissues and lock in that segment. So line of drive is slight P to A, predominantly I to S. So I'm going to flex, contralaterally rotate, contralaterally laterally bend, 
from here. I can either use a contact point of being my thumb on that inferior margin. I want to get my forearm down in my line of drive, so I'm going to get it down low and spread slightly, eye to S. Or another contact, which tends to be a little bit more forgiving on your patients, is using your thenar eminence. In which case, I can slide up my thenar eminence and do the same thing. Because we're going eye to S, remember we have to take tissue slack or tissue play into account. So once you palpate that rib, you're probably going to have to come a little bit from I to S taking tissue pull to lock into that inferior margin. If you start here, by the time you take that tissue slack out, you'll probably be in the superior rib, in this case in T6. So that's going to be elevation, in this case, of the seventh costal on the right. 